So granted, I want to talk to you about a promotion opportunity. <laughs> See, right now we're at we're in an apex. We're in an apex for an amazing event. I want to stick with me here. Stick with me. We're at the start of moving our company forward. The brand name. Move that forward. So I'm going to make you the vice president dean of our company. And then if you work with me, work with me. I'm going to crash this car into a pole. We're going to film it. <laughs> we're going to call it news. You're still with me. Okay. So, yeah. so uh, uh, we just saw Nightcrawler. Uh, but I don't know if we can pull this off. We're kind of, you know, media like that. That's big and evil. We're small and neutral. Says you. <laughs> You're supposed to follow up that we are big and. Oh wait, no. It wasn't big and ambitious. It was ambitious and misunderstood, like Germany. I. I what, what is that reference to? Futurama, damn it! I was thinking a totally, entirely different Futurama joke. But. I know. <laughs> but I had to fit in my favorite one there somehow. Okay, well. But when you think about it, doesn't that surmise Jake Gyllenhaal ambitious and misunderstood? No, he was just crazy. Actually, the joke I was more thinking of was, uh, we, it's a meaningless title, but we give it to him so he feels better about himself. <laughs> Five seconds later, I feel better about myself! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah, Nightcrawler. Uh, I will say this, uh... As much as I hate Christmas, I do love this time of year for movies. It's the most wonderful time of the year. <laughs> no. <laughs> I forgot I said like two Christmas movies this year. Don't make me. Uh, oh, God. I just remembered Medea, the Medea Christmas one. That's coming out, right? That, came, I already out, have a, that came out last year. I don't, in all fairness, there's. Okay, sorry. We got the guy topic. from like. I, we got one horrible Christmas movie. I forget what it's called, though. Uh, but. Yeah, it looks terrible. Anyway, but yeah, Nightcrawler. Jesus. Uh, yeah. Really fucking good movie. It really is a really good movie. Uh, this is like easily the best Jack Gyllenhaal performance I think I've ever Did you personally... Say Jack Gyllenhaal? No, I said Jake. Okay. <laughs> I think I said Jake. I said Jack accidentally. It's like Jack Nicholson and Jake Gyllenhaal combined to form uh, Jack Gyllenhaal. I don't know. <laughs> I, I got nothing clever for that right now. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so it's easily the best Jake Gyllenhaal performance I have ever seen him do, personally. I mean, I heard he's pretty good in what was the movie, Enemies last year, although I never personally saw it. I think it actually came out this year, didn't it? I think it was last year. It might have been this By the way, it's on Amazon's video. Watch it now and ignore the two-star rating. Maybe it's two-star in for you. You know, it changes depending on the person. No, seriously, it's... No, on Amazon, it's two-star. Sorry, we digress. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Nightcrawler. sorry. Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler. <laughs> Jake Gyllenhaal is fucking terrifying. Yep. From frame one, I, I don't know how we got into this character. I actually, this is one I would actually be very curious to see the behind the scenes of. Yeah. Because like from minute one, I'm assuming he lost weight. He looks like he lost weight for this. Like he has this from and the minute that he's introduced, he, he's introduced breaking into like a train station place yeah. and basically kills someone right off the bat. Well, he doesn't kill him. He beats him up and steals him. Steals his watch. I don't know. We don't know if he him or he killed him. We don't ever see him again. So. We see him start to beat him up, and then it cuts to the next scene where he's yeah. in his car with a new watch that he stole from the cops. So, we don't know. He could have killed him. I kind of took away that he killed him. But no, he just he just beat up private security and stole his watch. That's well, what how, I got from How him. do you know? I don't, but how do you know he killed him? It's a, See, there you go. Different perspectives. <laughs> That's the thing, though. He's also never directly killed anyone in this movie, though. Mm, I don't know. It's, it's, it's honest to God. It's one of those characters that... If you if you didn't give him something to do, he probably would. Yeah. So it's one of those things. I don't doubt that he. It's one of the characters. If he did scum, so, kill someone, it would not surprise me at all. Fair enough. He was pretty holy hell throughout the entire thing. Yeah, like that's the one thing that really goes movie is the fact that it is a slow build of tension. But dear God, does it hold it for the entire two hours of this movie? Yep. Like I like. Like the, the Jake Gyllenhaal's character from the minute he's introduced, just immediately. It's immediately unsettling. Yeah, he's basically kind of like one of those... He comes across as one of those, like, social outcasts that you're afraid would do something very terrible. No, he's clearly has... He's clearly fucking psychotic. Yeah, <laughs> no, he is. He's... Which we get from both his, obviously, lack of care for what's right and wrong and his one major outburst. Not even that. This is, like... Textbook antisocial personality disorder. Yeah, no, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> oh yeah, and like, uh, 
like it's kind of intriguing because you see him and it appears and he has like he, he rarely blinks if you notice that like he doesn't blink that very often unless he's talking to somebody I didn't notice that like that's what I I think that's what made him so unsettling because he doesn't he, like he purposely like, widens his eyes he rarely blinks unless he's ranting about something he don't say he does blink on a regular basis I said that really really fucking fast <laughs> but uh but it's a, he rarely blinks unless he's trying to explain something to someone in which case yeah then he does blink kind of like a nervous person would yeah and just overall, just he doesn't really have like natural motion. He has a fake, he has this kind of pasted smile throughout the entire yeah, thing. He's hunched over. <laughs> he's hunched over. He, he does that thing that people like psychotics do, where they're like they're really good at charming with people, but when you really get to know them, they just yeah. really not only don't care, but also are just really disturbing. <laughs> And dear God, <laughs> so it's just that build. Like uh, you, your comparison you made halfway through is kind of correct. It's kind of the Scarface of the news industry. Yeah, I mean, basically, this film is meant to be like a commentary on yellow journalism. So basically, kind of like the indie guys who try. Well, even then, even like, then, it's like it's about some mainstream media as well. I mean, for some at least, like mostly one point. Even then, like there's only like two people that are really going for this, and the rest are like, yeah. is this? Right? Is this okay? And even then, it's like when you look at media. A lot of the times, what do they do? They try to show the shock stories to get people into it. Oh yeah, I mean, I agree with like some yeah. of the points they're making. My point is though, is like uh, this is only like a couple people that are really going for this in the movie. Everyone yeah. else is like, dude, I think we're crossing a moral boundary, which they are. Yeah. But like, it's only because like, it's like commentary if it was run by psychotics, which is yeah. entirely possible. But. Uh, but like, mean, the whole yeah. movie is like it stars Jake Gyllenhaal, who is this really, like I said, antisocial, clearly psychotic person, out person, person, and uh, he doesn't really know what to do himself. He's trying to like he steals stuff and he sells it to other people to get money, and he's uh, constantly trying to negotiate, trying to try to sell himself as a worker for somebody. But as one person says in the right beginning, I'm not hiring a fucking thief. Yeah. <laughs> so he can't find a job. But one day he's driving back and he comes across a car that's on fire on the freeway. Or is it on a bridge? I think it was on a bridge. But, it was uh, an overpass. So Overpass. Yeah. Either way. Uh, then he pulls over, not to help, just to watch. Yeah. Which just, again, goes back into just how fucking disturbing this character is. And, like, it is a genuinely really good character. Like, if you did not know this was uh, Jack Gyll uh, I said Jack again, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, Jake. you did. Uh, okay, that time I caught myself. Uh, Jake <laughs> Gyllenhaal, like, you would not fucking recognize him. He's that good in this movie. Like, you did not see him at all. Like, Prince of Persia, that's out of my head now. But, uh, but, and then all he's doing that, while he's kind of just watching the these two police officers save this woman from the car, you notice these uh, news people, like, in, in, like yeah. indie uh, footage, I don't know what you yeah, call them. night crawlers. Night crawlers. Oh, that's actually the term for him? Yeah, that's what, he's, that's what the guy said. It's like, uh, he, uh, the guy played, or one of those news, those said guys played by Bill Paxton. So I'm guessing this is what his career took after Twister. Yeah. <laughs> You know what? Recording Twister is a bit too dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go to yeah. violence in L.A. This was L.A., right? Yeah. Okay, just making sure. Uh, and he's, and he kind of just he gets curious about it. Like he's like, "What do you guys do? What? How does this work?" All right. And then he starts to try doing it himself. And the rest of the movie is kind of like a slow rise to power as he takes greater and greater risks, get better yeah. footage, and including in the, manipulation of crime scenes. Manipulation uh, of crime rippled. scenes. And the big one, which happens about halfway through, is... Uh, which makes up the movie's third act. Yeah. But, but I, I mean, that's one of those cases I'm not sure I really want to spoil it, though. I just yeah. kinda, like, it's kind of like... It's in well, the trailers. Show, yeah, they show one of the trailers. Yeah, but it's one of those things. The, way, the length it goes to, though, I think it's kind of just best to let leave it unsit. Really? Because I kind of... I knew it was going to go with that way with the trailer itself as well. Okay, fair enough. I think I saw the yeah. trailer, but like, maybe twice. Basically, it gets to the point where he... I'm not going to say the full details, but just, like, what, le you know, obviously the <laughs> basis of it, because... Um, at some point, when they're doing investigation, they get to a uh, crime scene before the cops do, and there's a shootout. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or, And ba basically, like, these two guys are found leaving a house where uh, what looked like a family of three were... Or family of two and their housekeeper were killed. Mm-hmm. And so what he does is, instead of rightfully reporting all the details, he edit he edits out some of the stuff, including one of the people apparently still being alive. And, and the two people that actually did the deed, who, yeah. drive, who drove away. Yeah. And so he uses that as an opportunity to basically, like, follow it down himself. So mm -hmm. he can get, like... All the footage. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah, and that's basically the movie's climax. So it's, yeah. it's a pretty good climax. Although, honestly, like, this is one of those movies I was kind of expecting more from it. Yeah. 
a little bit, so that was one part that I found kind of disappointing, was the fact that he's clearly just, like, caught a character, so you're waiting for him to snap. Yeah. And There's it, only, like, one moment where you're Like, one very it. brief moment, and even then, like, that's that's about it. And I thought that was kind of disappointing, but yeah. at the same time, it still fits with the themes of the movie. Yeah. Although, when you think about it, the fact that he... It was only that one outburst, I think, kind of made it a little bit more terrifying, especially, like, at the end of that climax, which, mm -hmm. that I'm not going to spoil. Yeah, I know, leave that alone. Where so. basically just, you realize how far he will go, and just, like, how terrible of a person he is. Like, see, I, like, from screen, like, again, from frame one, like, I knew he was that kind of yeah. person. So I was one of those things, didn't well, necessarily surprise me, I was more yeah. just watching the no, it's like, slow descend as it became more and more evident. Yeah, like, pretty much. I mean, like, I mean, I mean, we all knew he was going to be a terrible person, but it's just admittedly, it's just like, I kind of knew, I didn't know how it was going to happen, but it's just, when they got to the part that led to the ultimate of what the hellery, mm -hmm. it's like, yeah. there's that moment where he just gives a look, it's just like, oh, this isn't going to end well. <laughs> I think, <laughs> and it's just, I, I know the ex <laughs> I didn't say Wait, what? Nothing, never. No, what did I say? No, uh... Don't worry about it. Good, get going, get going. I just... What? I thought I said this ain't gonna go well. No, I said something like I caught myself because I realized it was that oh. spoiler territory. <laughs> but it was just like... That's the thing. As you said, Gyllenhaal just gives like one hell of a performance in this and... I think it's my personal favorites of the year, to be honest. Oh, yeah. Yeah. As far as just single performance goes, he doesn't get nominated for this. I'm gonna be upset. Yeah. So, anyway, fancy your thought? There really isn't much else to say. It's just he gives like these, just these little subtle moments where just you mm. can pinpoint the exact moment when a decision is made. <laughs> yeah, because he's like one of these. That's a he's basically just like he's a high. What was it uh, high on, functioning no, sociopath? Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. I was like, it's like Sherlock, Sherlock, Sherlock. There we go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> I mean, this guy thinks quick. He makes very, very. He's just very logical in the way he processes things. Yeah, but he knows how people work enough to manipulate yeah. him. Not necessarily to understand it, but enough to manipulate yeah. him, which is a very common trait amongst exactly. like antisocial yeah. people. Because as he said, he does. It's not that he doesn't understand people; he just hates them. <laughs> yep. So and again, even that, he said that with a fucking smirk on his face. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, dear God, this guy's gonna murder me. Yep. Oof. It's like imagine just. Like, yeah, we. You look like Jake Jalen Hall. You can do the face. Look, and this looks like a derp face. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Pressure's on, Grant. Come on. Better, but you look like you're trying to seduce the camera. Now you look like trying to seduce me. That's better. Okay, now you're starting to give me the creeps. Okay. That's <laughs> <good>. <laughs> Call me. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, this one of those movies is kind of hard to talk about without yeah. going too much into the storylines, and this one of those movies, you should go see it. Yeah. Because this got beat up by Ouija, which Arr! I'm not surprised, to be honest, because... It was past Halloween! I'm just saying, Ouija had much better marketing than this movie did. But, that is true. So, it's like... If also, we were if we weren't movie nerds, we could have very easily missed this. Still very ticked at also beat out John Wick. At least John Wick still had a good audience, huh? Yeah, but it still got beat out by Ouija. <laughs> <laughs> we know better, man. We don't have to follow the example. That means the yes, by... Ouija review is probably going to come in soon, so we probably won't help with the statistic. No, just like we didn't help with frickin' Transformers 4. Well, at least Michael Bay is not directing the next one. Oh, God. <laughs> He's directing a movie about Benghazi. You heard about that, right? I didn't hear about the Benghazi part. But. That is why he's not directing this movie. He's because di he's directing a movie about Benghazi. And the moment I saw that, I never thought I'd say this. I said, "Get back on Transformers, please." That should oh. be fun. Oh God. So yeah, Nightcrawler. Uh, <laughs> this is gonna be a really short review. With like, but basically, yeah. what it's saying about it's like, go see this fucking movie. Yeah. It's a really good. Uh, yeah, the only other things we can mention is, like, the other major players. There's, um... There's Nina, who is, like, the older yeah. uh, news executive, who yeah. buys a lot of Jake Gyllenhaal's footage. Yeah. And, uh, Lou, was, uh, Jake yeah. Gyllenhaal's character's name is Lou in this. Yeah, and then the other guy, his, who becomes his partner, who... Basically. Is still a little, scrup a little bit scrupulous, but he clearly has way better morals. 
because he's a guy that just like when he realizes how terrible things get, it's just like no, okay, this is yeah, wrong. It's yeah. like okay, you know what? It's like yeah, it's like screw the title, screw the money. I don't want to do this, and then that's when Gyllenhaal is less than or is less than subtle. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hence the I don't understand people. I just or it's not that I don't understand. I don't like them. And if you don't do what we agreed upon, I could hurt you. The best comparison I could think of to Jake Gyllenhaal in this movie is Christian Bale in American Psycho. You don't see it? Kinda. Really? Because I kind of said like the quiet, passive outer exterior mixed in with the well, I'm incredibly violent. Uh, well, he, he himself isn't incredibly violent. That's True, the but the personality type is there. Yeah, no, definitely. I agree with that. Although, also, I can't help because I remember Christian Bale being really over the top in that movie. I, yeah, that's a pretty solid performance. Watch it again. Yeah. But, no, I no, I mean yeah. that in a good way. Oh, okay. But I'm just yeah. saying, because like, that fit in with a the theme, but sorry, we digress. Yeah. Um, and it's just interesting seeing like these boundaries that people cross. Like, Nina basically... Well, hurts herself out, yeah. for lack of a better term. Well, I'm sure I can find a better term, but that's really the most apt one you're going to know yeah. right away what we're talking about. Because, you know, once again, it kind of fits into the way Gyllenhaal, or Lou, analyzes people. Mm -hmm. It's like he, right from the, it's like when he gets the chance, he basically tries to... Get everything he can yeah. out of it. Yeah. By, you know, talking about, like, <laughs> look, you have short contracts. Your station's the worst in the, in the state <laughs> or the city. Blah, 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 blah. It's just like... It goes from her being, like, a little bit against it to just full-out embracing it, because just, like, don't care anymore! Money! <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, everyone kind of sells himself out yeah. in this movie, even, like, uh, a loose sidekick, basically, kind of sells himself out. Yeah. He's also kind of there to be the comic uh, comic relief. Yeah. A little bit, like, uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Sorry, I'm just remembering the part where, you know, he finally gets his na needless title. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. And it's just, yeah. What you, like? Does that mean I get a raise? It's like pick a number. Yeah. Pick a uh, 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 seventy-five. Done. It's like I, I could have gotten more. Could I? Yes. Yes, you could. Have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just like, it's like negotiations over. I could have gotten more, couldn't I? Yes, yes you could have. <laughs> 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 And that the funny thing is, like, despite Gyllenhaal being an absolute creepo in this movie, he still gets some really good laughs. I don't know. For me, like. Most people are like, laughing. Like I, said moment. Yeah, like there are a couple of good parts here and then. Even then, there's always just an uncomfortableness yeah. to laugh. Like even the jokes that are there, like if you and like one other guy in the front were laughing your ass off. I was sitting there like, which one was it again? Oh, now remember. You know what they It's like the way I see it, if I show up, I'm there for the... You're probably having the worst day of your life. Some of those lines. Either and way, it's like one of those ones like, you know, it was simultaneously uncomfortable and funny. Just like... It's like, ha, ah, 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 ah. Well, because it's a funny line, but you know he says it, like, 100% serious, and he's yeah. just so straight-faced about it, and he's like, it just be is like, it makes you so uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's the thing, like, uh, this is a really, like, one of the most tense movies I've seen all year because of the fact that just the character just makes you feel so uncomfortable, and it makes you... Pretty much. And he's in, like, almost all of the movie. There are very few scenes where he is not in it. I don't think there's any scenes where he's not in it. Pretty much. So it's like, you're stuck with this character from beginning to end, and you're stuck with that unsettling feeling of looking into his creepy-ass eyes. Yeah. And is wondering just if and when he is just going to snap. And only, like I guess it only happens for like a brief moment. Even then, it's like, Jesus. Yeah. But, uh... So, yeah, you're again, it's like, that's what kind of holds your attention. It's like, this is an unpredictable movie, too. Yeah. You don't really know what's going to happen. Pretty much. It's like, that's... In most normal case, like the fact they made this character as messed up as he is, it's it's generally a risky gambit for most of these mm. movies. But they really just they keep you hooked the entire way through. Oh yeah, like again, it it takes it does a smart route. It doesn't rush into any major yeah. action scenes. Even the last one is more. It's there's more purpose to the final action yeah. sequence because again, it's built building up for so long over the movie, and that's really where just pure ambition and psychotic nature really yeah. comes into play. But. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's really, like, yeah. there's not much more to say about that without going to spoiler territory. But. Yeah, I'd say, yeah, because there really isn't much that we didn't like about this movie. I'd no, say. like, the only thing that really, there's a couple parts that bugged me. It's kind of a nitpick, I will admit. The music choices. Some of the like, music choices were kind of bizarre. Like, there's yeah. a part where uh, Nina and Lou are walking in the station together, and this is, like, after he started selling her clips, and they yeah. just kind of get to know each other. And, uh... 
this weird like Steven Spielberg music yeah. is playing, and uh, he's talking about this long uh, rant, uh, speech about making a business plan, learning stuff online, his educational yeah. background, stuff like that. And then the scene ends with him taking a seat in like the reporter chair, as if that's what he wants to be. Then he says like five scenes later that that's not what he wants. So it's like, yeah, that one was kind of that's like that's an interesting and kind of pointless scene. Um, yeah. I mean, Not like, the really educational stuff was important, but I mean, like, we're sitting in the yeah. chair and stuff like that, I mean, that's supposed to be foreshadowing, but it doesn't really foreshadow to much, except that he wants yeah. more. And I think, and that's, I think, actually, I think that kind of fits in measure, then, like, at the beginning, like, maybe he was considering that, but then it's just, like, he kind of realizes... Maybe. No, as you said, he wants more, and it's, like, as you said, it's, like, it's not the, uh... As you said, it's, like, he didn't want to be in the chair, he wanted to be the guy owning the station, you know, with the camera. Mm-hmm. And all that. So, so it's just like... Or maybe it's just the idea that, you know... What do we see when we see, like, the epitome of power in a news station? The anchors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, of course, he, does, he doesn't want to be on camera. He wants everyone else to be on camera. He's yeah. like, uh... He's the behind the sheens? Behind the sheens guy, yes. Actually, <laughs> behind, the, the oh, God. <laughs> behind the sheens, a.k.a. Uh, TMZ coverage of Charlie. Which one was Charlie? Charlie Sheen! I was going with Sean Connery, but yeah. Uh, well, I was just saying, you know, behind the sheens, that does sound like something they would do. <laughs> <laughs> different perspectives again. Yep. Took then two totally different directions, but yeah. Shilly Brown. Anyway, <laughs> um, yeah. Like again, that's this is really gonna be a really short review because all all I really have to say about this are good things, except for like a couple of the music yeah. choices were oh. a little bit distracting. Yeah. Also. I will say the final, well, not, I'd say the penultimate final moment, mm -hmm. like, at the end of the climax, or it's, at the end of the climactic scenes, like, it, something about it felt a li I think it was a little campy. It was, a li mostly because of the music, because this plan is, like, yeah. an angelic choir, and this, what should be like, kind of dark, disturbing <sighs> scene. It's supposed, like I said, so, the way I figure it's supposed to be kind of, like, just, you know, juxtaposition to kind of increase the creep factor, mm. but it's... I'm not sure what it was. I think it was just... It's hard to describe what it, what it was about it that just didn't feel right. Like, maybe it was the music, maybe just the way that they were talking. I think... Um, I think the problem I had with it, or, like, kind of... I know what you're thinking is, along the lines, I think it just would have been better if it was left unsaid. Yes. I think it's... I think uh, it's more yeah. like... Like, I think if... It directly says what it's going for, rather than yeah. leaving it ambiguous kind of up to interpretation. Like, yeah. it's what it should have done. Yeah. Even though it's kind of obvious what he was gonna yeah. doing anyway. Also, I think just maybe they just, even if they just left it with like Gyllenhaal saying his piece, I think that would have been fine. I don't think they should have said anything at all. Yeah. I think they should cut that whole little speech out. Yeah, uh, that like, would that would be the best. I would have thought that would have been better because then there's like that's leaves it for the audience to figure out themselves, which makes you know doesn't yeah. underestimate your audience, which is I think what it does. That definitely is the problem. I think then yeah, like yeah, actually yeah, I'd say that probably does hit it on the head. <laughs> yeah, so woot, I'm right about something. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's okay. I'm still right about 22 and 21 Jump Street. Okay, you get you have one thing. <laughs> one thing you're right about. Too. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, in all fairness, your expectations went up after the second one, so. Yeah, so, uh, Yeah. All right. We're tied! <laughs> oh! I can't lord it over you anymore! <laughs> <laughs> all right. But so, yeah, just... yeah, like the other complaint I have to that is like the very, very end is a bit anticlimactic, in my opinion. Like I, I found the at the very very end felt a little unsatisfying. The to moment me. itself was unsatisfying, but then you just it's one of those things you're like I thought about it, just like it's kind of terrifying when you start to realize how many more people's lives he's going to ruin. True, true. Because it's just like let's just say he adopts someone else's business plan. Oh yeah, yeah. And then you kind of realize it's just like. He does. He does fucking straight up kill people in this movie. When you think about it, two, possibly three. At the um, very least. I can't say we ever directly does, but he is. No, no, no. Look, I mean, look at the thing with the van. Yeah. Without giving anything away. Yeah. Except Once again, that guy. Not dead, but seriously messed up. <laughs> I don't know. Do you really think he made it? <laughs> Again, it's kind of left to interpretation. I yeah. guess, like, our discussion I, here yeah, kind of shows, like, like, you can assume he's a, like, a killer or not, depending on how you take the scene. Yeah. Uh, it's like, either way, it's just like, he is... 
I think a crazy just, manipulator. I think it just shows I'm more cynical than you are. But, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so I guess move on to trailers then? Yeah. All right. So a couple of these we've gotten before. We've talked about several times before, so I'm not going to rehash it. Uh, we did get a couple new ones, though. We got Inherent Voice. What was that a one? Vice. Vice. That's the uh, new Paul uh, Thomas Anderson movie, the one... Uh... Okay, I always get the Paul Andersons mixed up. Which one is he? Paul Thomas Anderson is the good one. Paul W. S. Anderson is the guy who made the crappy Resident Evil movies. <laughs> okay, so Paul Thomas Anderson, that's uh He did the master uh Okay, yeah, yeah, I love it. The okay. There will be blood. Yeah, directed my favorite movies. Uh Master, also a very good movie. I have not seen I have not seen either of those flicks. I know I really need to. They're both on Netflix. I know. I just <laughs> I mean, uh, there'll be Blood's my all-time favorite movie, yeah, so... Yeah, I know it's supposed to be fantastic, so I will get to when I get the chance. So I love that act. I love it, the director. And Heron Voice, it looks like an odd little movie. Yeah. Uh, I mean, granted, <laughs> Paul Anderson has a reputation of making very oddball movies, so it yeah. is fitting. This one's much more comedy than the last few ones I've seen. Yeah, like... Yeah. With Joaquin Phoenix, just... Yeah, like, this feels more along the lines of Boogie Nights, now that I think about it. Like, honestly, like, this... For some reason, when I was watching this, I thought, like, this is what Chinatown would be if this was a comedy. If it was a comedy. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was thinking of watching the trailer. I was like, it's a comedy, it's trying to be funny, at the same time you get a layer that just something is really fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, this is Chinatown if it was trying to be funny. So, I mean, like, I like Joaquin Phoenix. I'm... Glad he's yeah. not Doctor Strange, but I like Joaquin Phoenix. Yeah, uh, has a pretty good cast overall in there, from what I remember. Like, wasn't there also? Uh, there was Reese Witherspoon. There was a uh, Joaquin Phoenix. There was Josh Brolin. Josh Brolin. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh, the pancakes. <laughs> and a few other ones that I forget. But uh, yeah, it's a pretty solid cast. I mean, it's Paul Anderson. I haven't yet to see a movie that he's directed that I have not liked. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, hopefully that'll be good. Yep. And then we got a trailer for Hor Horrible Bosses 2. I actually didn't hate the, la the first one. Yeah, I heard that one was alright. Like, I watched bits of it. It's like, okay, there are actually some genuinely funny jokes in here. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know. It's like any sequel. It could bomb horrendously yeah. uh, or actually be decent. But I I feel like I'd mostly want to see it for the cast. Yeah. Like, just Christoph Waltz is usually delightful in a terrifying way sometimes. Yeah, but he's also in Green Hornet and... Uh, Epic, so I kind of always had to be careful was, which movies in. He was still one of the better parts of Green Hornet. Fair enough. That's yeah, epic. Much, I though. can't. Yeah, that's true. I can't. I didn't see Epic, so I can't judge. He, he, he's one of those characters. He knew he was in a dumbass movie, so he just kind of hammed it up. But right, there's he's one. It's always the villain. It's always the villain knows he's in a terrible movie. He's like, fuck it, I'm gonna go out here. It was like Jack Bauer in uh, Pompeii, <laughs> <laughs> or Raul Julia in Street Fighter. I've never actually watched the first Street Fighter all either. I will show it to you at some point. At some point. We'll get into that. Um, but yeah. So, man, this is a short review. But uh, that was it. All right. We Dumb got Dumb and Dumber 2, but we've talked about it so many times, I don't want to talk about it again. Yeah. And American Sniper, we've talked about it a couple times now, so there's no point in yeah. rehashing that. Um, yeah, I mean, you got any final thoughts? Not that I can think of. Oh, damn, okay. I mean, it's just, I think we said everything we need to. It's just a really damn well-made film. Yeah, go see it. Uh, like, I mean, this one's movies where you don't talk about spoilers. That's saying yeah. a lot, so. It's just great, like, great, you know, like, anti-hero analysis and just... I don't know if... I think anti-hero yeah. is a bit of a strong word. Huh? Like, well, I don't think everyone really is supposed to like him. Huh? Well, of course, well, technically speaking, anti-hero is considered, you know, the protagonist... is considered the protagonist uh, who's not of the traditional hero means. And he is, by all... for all intents and purposes, the protagonist, even... Though he's not a good person. Well, if you're being that, if you're gonna be that guy about it, then I suppose so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and just as I said, does kind of a good little analysis, of, or just kind of commentary on media politics as well. As well, it's kind of like what it seems like what it's going for, and just how like it's less about. Boo. Kim Tiger now. Use your words. Yeah. Use your words. It's less about integrity, more about sensationalizing and ratings, and just trying to basically find flavor in tragedy without mm -hmm. real care. Yeah. That's a good way of putting it. So, um, what he said. I mean, that's a pretty solid way to sum it up. Yeah, so Nightcrawler, go see it. 
Uh, we actually got a few good movies out this week, or hopefully good movies. I, Birdman's finally playing in Santana Row, and I really want to go see that. So I'm going to try to see if I can drag someone over there. I was really wishing that it was going to be, you know, Birdman! <laughs> and this one's probably going to be better. <laughs> yeah, I know. Or like, that. that's the kind they're going to allude to. Um, also, Big Hero 6. Oh yeah, it was, uh, that's like coming until Friday though, so we're not doing that this week. But oh, <laughs> yeah. So we got that's so Big Hero Six Interstellar. That's next week. Uh, this week we got uh, Birdman. We got Horns, which is playing here uh, at this theater, and we probably should check out Ouija. Ouija. But I don't really want to, so that's one of those ones I'm willing to skip. But yeah, let's... I, I'd rather go see Saint Vincent. That's what that was the other one I wanted oh, to go yeah. see. Yeah. So it's like we'll probably go see that one instead because. Because fuck Ouija. I don't give a shit about this stupid board game bullshit. Uh, I heard rumors of like there's a. That's probably a, probably was a joke. But uh, what a Ouija two. Not a Ouija two, but uh, sorry, I was checking my. I got an email, so I was yeah. checking schedule stuff. Was it, when's that Monopoly movie gonna come out? Yeah, that's that was a rumor I heard about with like Monopoly movie directed by who was it? Ridley Scott. That was it. That was. You know, you know what? I would go fucking see it. It was yeah. Ridley Scott, considering the crazy stuff he's made related, like yeah. Noah and now Exodus. No, Noah was. Uh... Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, he didn't direct Noah. Uh, he directed. He did direct Exodus, yeah. though. Darren Aronofsky. There we go. Yeah. So, yeah, whatever that's gonna be, it's gonna be fantastic yeah. for the wrong reasons. Yeah. Well, I think he stepped down. He's just producing it. Oh. Yeah. Well, now I'm all. Sad. We will see. Now I'm just sad. Get Michael Bay a direct Monopoly. <laughs> Bankrupt! Boo! <laughs> I landed on go! There's no getting a geo card here, kid. <laughs> <laughs> you sunk my battleship. <laughs> oh god! He's about to let. Was it? Leave me some no, what's uh? Was the uh, last one Boardwalk? Some Boardwalk Empire? Or Boardwalk, Boardwalk Empire. Empire? Yeah. So it was Boardwalk Empire. You mean the the TV show? No, the the place was it Boardwalk Avenue. I have I don't. It, that's a game I don't play very often because yeah. I don't want to hate my family. So. Fair <laughs> <laughs> well, time to beat you up and sell it on the news market. That's what the game. That's the movie. <laughs> that's the movie should be. Is this a <laughs> horror movie of everyone playing Monopoly? <laughs> they all end up dead. Turns into a psychological thriller. I did not land on train track, you're such a dickwad! <laughs> yeah. Wait. None of us bought Baltic Avenue. Then who owns it? The bank? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're just dicking around now. So, <laughs> so I think we're done here. Bye. Yeah. See ya! I want to talk about investment opportunity. <laughs>